Okay, so let's discuss who's responsible for what. If you're anything like most bands out there, flailing about in the wind, hoping to get your big break by some mysterious twist of fate, you're thinking that most of these five components fall under the responsibility of someone else. But if you're the progressive, get up and get things moving and find success type of band, you're gonna realize that the more you take on, the higher your value is in the eyes of those around you and those that you'll be working with and more than likely get paid by. Generally, in most situations, the first two components, that being the props and the talent, are handled by the band, and the remaining three, the venue, the support staff, and promotions, are going to be handled by the club or the venue that you're playing in, and that's cool if you're okay with just being okay. And this is where I really want you to pay attention, because what we're going to be getting into here can really change the dynamics of the game between you and venues. See, by agreeing to take on more of the responsibilities, you're effectively taking a huge load off of the venue's shoulders. And if you do this, you're in a better position to negotiate for more money simply because you're now providing more value when they take you on as one of the acts playing in their club. And not only that, you'll also have more say, or maybe I should say control, over how things are done in terms of your promotions for your shows. Now, being in charge of the promotions allows you to do a better job at it than most clubs can. See, with a little creativity, you can totally outmarket any club owner in the music business and even give some of the big promoters a run for their money if you learn how to do this stuff properly. For instance, instead of a standard two-color flyer poster that most of the clubs that you see out there are using, you can have your own full-blown four-color posters made up and make your show stand out against the rest of the standard promo that they post up on the clubs and the rest of the bands are going to be using. I mean, think about it. The promoter has a standard flyer that he'll use to just paste your band photo onto and he'll pop that up anyway, right? So once you've got your fancy four colored posters printed out, you're going to be able to use them for any of your future gigs as well. And as for the cost, well, you're going to be so successful putting these techniques into action anyway that actual cost isn't really going to be an issue for very long. Another thing you can do is to send out your press kits to the local and regional media and if you've got media contacts in town, you can try taking advantage of that as well. And if you're a good writer, heck, you could write your own press release and send that off to all the local newspapers and magazines, as well as the internet media outlets. You can also reach out and let local radio stations know that you're going to be playing in town and where you're going to be playing in town. Almost all cities and small towns have at least one local radio and college radio station that's willing and even looking for bands to interview and promote. Get on the phone and find out who will bite. Send them your press kit and make a contact and you can use this each and every time you come back to town get your street team out you do have a street team right get your street team out there out and about handing out flyers and telling everyone about your show get them all geared up in your t-shirts and have them talk about you like your band is already famous Remember the social proof thing I was talking about earlier, right? Well, this is where these types of things come into play. If you're acting famous, people are going to believe that you're famous, whether they've heard of you or not. They're going to think that they're missing out on something. And for the next step, you've got your mailing list, right? Collecting email addresses of everyone you come in contact with who likes your band, right? You better be because this is extremely important. So send out an email blast to your list and invite them to your show. And if you've got their addresses, mail out a personal invite and get them to come down and join you. Heck, bribe them with an autographed CD or a t-shirt if they have one to bring with them. Uh, tell them you'll be doing a signing at your merch table after the show. And get them to come on over and chat with you. My point is, is if you're in charge of your own promotions, you can get as creative as you want. And if you know you can do a better job than the promoters, then jump in with both feet and take the bull by the horns. Both you and the club owner are going to be happier in the long run. Plus, by doing this, you're going to put your band in a much better light in the club owner's eyes which in the long run is going to result in more money in your pocket. So let's break down how the old system used to work. The club owners usually have a specific budget worked out for how they're going to pay bands that do play in their clubs. They're probably thinking they'll shell out about $200 to $300 to promote whoever is on the stage. And maybe that's a little high, but any club owner worth his salt should be spending at least that much on his promotions. And if he's not, well, then maybe that's not the kind of club that you really want to find yourself playing. If they don't put any money into their promotions, then it's probably not that great a uh, draw for you and, and not a club that you find a lot of people wanting to go to anyway. But maybe you can change that if you put these into action and you can actually help out the club owner by playing there and putting these things that I'm going to be talking about 
into action for him and your band as well. So like I said, about $300 on promotions, hopefully, and he's thinking that he's gonna pay you guys, the talent, about $500. Well, 300 to 400 if you can get away with it, right? I'm, I'm sure you've been there. Anyway, he's probably charging about $5 at the door, and he's hoping to sell anywhere from 150 to 200 tickets, which will allow him to at least break even. But he's going to make a decent amount on drinks with this formula, so in the end, he'll come out okay. Then there's you guys, the band. You gotta practice anywhere from two to three times per week. And this is all on your time. And you're usually doing this around full-time jobs because let's face it, you haven't used the mass music exposure system yet and you gotta pay your bills, right? So nine times out of 10, you've paid for your own instrument. And if you haven't, it was probably paid for by your girlfriend or your parents, but we won't split hairs. It costs money to keep your guitar, your bass or your drums or your microphones in tip top shape. And you need that to perform well and give the show that your fans deserve and there are usually going to be four of you in the band and if there's more then there's even less cash to go around so the money's going to get split up at least let's say at least four ways if you're a three-piece band then it works out a little bit better for you but let's say for argument's sake most bands are made up of four players and when all is said and done you're looking at about $125 per band member, and that's at a $500 gig night. $125 per band member, and most bands out there today are okay with this. They're just thankful that somebody's even paying them to show up and play. And the bottom line is, you're not making enough money at $125 each per gig to really do anything with your band, to really get your band moving up to the next level. This simply is not going to cut it. It takes money to record albums and promote your shows, send out your press kits, and everything else that's involved in putting it all together properly. So how do you go about breaking out of this dead-end formula? And let's face it, even the club owner is just barely making enough to justify even having you play at his club. So how do you go about making the situation work out for both of you? You're in charge of your own career, so if you're going to break out of the never-ending dead-end rut of a measly $125 each per show, you're going to have to find some way to sweeten the pot. So how do you go about doing this? You can start by putting together, as I mentioned earlier, some kick-ass four-color posters. And if you've got that mailing list with at least 100 people or more on it, then this also has some serious value. And if you don't, like I said earlier, you really need to get to work on this. And I'm going to give you some ideas how you can go about building up on this in just a little bit. You can offer CD giveaways at the door, autograph posters as door prizes, get on the media, start making those contacts. If you've got contacts in the local media, don't you think the club owner would find value? value in getting some press for his club? Heck yeah. If you don't have any high-end props, you might want to think about investing in some. A smoke machine, laser light show, wireless mics and guitar receivers, they all add a little something special to your show. And if you've got promotional clips of your band playing live that the club can show during the week up to the night of your show, this is also going to add value to your promotional efforts. You can get college kids to throw one of these together and they'll probably do it for you for dibs on your CDs and free entry to your gigs. You just gotta get creative. Now, to really put the icing on thick, you can get some t-shirts made up with your band's logo, and you should have these as part of your merchandising package anyway, but you can give the t-shirts to the bartenders and drink servers to wear on the night of your show. And I mean absolutely give them to them, because they may not just wear it on the night of your show, they may end up wearing it at the club more often, which again, it just works for your branding purposes. And this will probably up your t-shirt sales as well. Now, with an offer this complete and well thought out and planned, don't you think a club owner might begin to see you in a little bit of a different light? Do you think that he might start seeing some value in what you have to offer? My imagination is that he probably will. And hey, with a package this great, maybe you should be looking at playing some higher-end venues anyway, right? I mean, these are just a few ideas you can use to sweeten the pot, and I guarantee that when you put these into effect, you're gonna have more leverage to handle how you get paid and how you can make more bang for each and every show that you play at. I'll get into that in a little more in just a bit, but remember, I told you how you can go about building that mailing list, right? Well, in that list of pot sweeteners I just talked about, I mentioned door prizes and giveaways. Now check this one out because this is really, really cool, and it works like gangbusters for your list building efforts. 